Uh, hi, uh, this is the second meeting of the Genomics in the Cloud Book Club. I'm your host, Keithy Picard, and I'll share my screen and you'll see today's uh, agenda. Great. So we're recording this uh, meeting as we are with all of our meetings and posting these to our channel on YouTube. And a number of you have subscribed. Thank you for doing that to keep uh, in touch with uh, goings on in case you miss a meeting or uh, want to catch something uh, else to review. Uh, again, this is uh, week two. At the very end of this meeting, uh, in addition to the introductions, um, we'll have some time to go over the chapter assignments. Since our last meeting, uh, several of you have uh, offered to present chapters. So I put a, um, a spreadsheet together on Google Drive, tie Google Drive together with Slack, and um, anybody uh, can edit that file now. So uh, keep, you know, keep that in mind as, as we move forward, as we're talking about today, uh, take a look at the table of contents and see if there's an area that uh, appeals to you. So we'll cover chapter one today. Uh, as I mentioned, it's off to a, a slow start in the sense that it gives everybody a chance to get the book. Uh, to talk about um, you know, issues that we have with Slack or uh, other technical issues before we get going and also a chance for us to introduce each other, uh, introduce ourselves to each other uh, as we get going. Uh, I'll pause here as I always do. Uh, if there are any questions that people have right up front or things you'd like me to address during the call, uh, generally speaking, this whole thing should today be about, uh, I don't know, 30 to 45 minutes. We'll need the full hour for certainly for next week, which is about genomics. Um, but again, I'll pause here for any questions. Okay, let's jump into it. Um, chapter one is the introduction. Uh, there's our attribution for our book, Genomics in the Cloud. Um, as you saw in our last book club, ways to get the book. Um, there's also links on the Slack channel for different ways that you can uh, you can get a copy of, of the book. And indeed, uh, it may be available depending on where you live at your public library. So a quick overview, um, you can read faster uh, than I can speak, so I won't go through all of this, but uh, the Genomics in the Cloud, or GITC overview, the, the goal of this book is uh, to give, in, in the beginning, some essentials in genomics and computing. Um, some of the folks in this call are coming from an IT or computer engineering perspective, software engineering perspective, and have done more work in, um, in programming. Others come at this from a, a, a genomics background and are looking to move their work into the cloud. So we welcome everyone here. Um, it's challenging to have to know everything in this field because it is so complex and new. And that's the purpose of the book, book club is to kind of leverage your expertise. So if you have um, an area uh, that you can contribute, again, even being on these calls when there are things that you know about, can be wonderfully beneficial to other members. So I encourage you over the next few weeks um, not to drop out if you have a PhD in genomics because that's exactly why we need you here uh, is to answer those tricky questions. Or conversely, if you have a you know, master's or a PhD in software engineering uh, for the, for the uh, computing background as well. Um, the, 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 if you haven't started mucking around with um, uh, the, Google, sorry, the Google Cloud platform, uh, that's, that's a chapter that we'll, we'll talk about. Uh, we have a member who's offered to pick up that chapter. So we'll, uh, we'll, 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 we'll talk about the, that at the end. Um, a lot of this is predicated on learning about um, the GATK. We'll talk about that, what that means. And, and that's really the, the kind of the meat of, of the book. And then automating that. So workflow uh, automation through uh, WDL and Cromwell, uh, and then getting better at that. So it, how do you scale that across uh, even thousands of genomes uh, in parallel. Um, there's a chapter on Jupiter. Uh, it's something that's new to me, and I'm very excited that uh, another member has offered to pick up the chapter on Jupiter. Um, I've found it kind of overwhelming, and uh, Jupiter and Anaconda and things I've, I've played with, but I'm excited to be using this book club to learn more about them. And finally, there's a, a chapter on reproducibility, and if you've been following the chat, uh, the chatter on Slack, um, one of our members uh, is actually featured in that chapter, and he's offered to present it to us. Uh, so again, another fortunate um, series of events. We have uh, the person who, not you know, as we mentioned earlier last week, um, Geraldine has been following us, one of the authors of the book, and one of our members then uh, is uh, 
research is featured prominently in the chapter on reproducibility. So we actually have the person who is uh, featured there to talk about it. Um, as I mentioned, uh, there are some basic kind of basic tools and methods that are featured throughout the book. Uh, GATK or the Genome Analysis Toolkit, um, mostly through the Broad Institute um, in Boston in the United States is where the software comes from. Um, there are other main uh, components. I mentioned um, workflow, which is provided through a workflow description language or WDL, uh, where, you know, lots of three and four letter acronyms. So again, the goal of this book club is to familiarize everyone with uh, all these acronyms as much as anything else. Uh, the Google pot called platform, another acronym, GCP, uh, is the place where you can get free computing credits. It's discussed in the book, and we'll cover that in week uh, four, I think, um, when we uh, talk about moving to the cloud. Excuse me. And then there's uh, another piece called Terra, which is, um, again, further um, expanding the, the, um, the workflow, uh, again, across multiple genomes. Uh, it's with Broad and um, shoot, there's another group, but we'll, we'll get to it when we get to it, the, the, where, the, where that was developed. I just started looking at these websites over the weekend. So th those are the, the uh, core heavy lifting tools that we'll be using. There are a number of others, um, but we, those are a, a great place to start. And again, as you using your time now to kind of familiarize yourself with these um, would be a really good use of time. Um, I, I'll pause right there. Um, this is uh, actually getting into the chapter now. I'll pause there if there are any questions or, or comments from the group uh, before we go into, you know, why are we doing this and what's it all about, Alfie? Okay. And by the way, there's, uh, I, I just have a handful of slides here. There's, I think, uh, three or four more slides that uh, walk us through chapter one. And uh, again, we'll get to uh, intros and the rest. So really why we're here is, is primarily 20 years ago when the draft version of the human genome was announced in the Human Genome Project. Um, really, the reason that we're here 20 years later is that the cost of sequencing uh, genomes has dropped by about one million fold. Uh, and it, it is this, this super uh, logarithmic decline that far exceeds Moore's law. Uh, most of you probably have seen this, this diagram at one point in your career. But it, it just tracks the, the dynamic um, drop in pricing uh, for sequencing um, over the last 20 years, from about $3 billion US to less than 1,000 um, in this year, 2020. Um, one of the discussions we've been having uh, on Slack is where can you get it for less than $1,000? And indeed, there's a whole group of um, applications and services that will, you know, many of us believe will become available as uh, genomes become even less expensive moving down to the $100 genome, which um, a lot of people feel is either achievable or will be achievable in the next year or so. Uh, along the bottom, I, I do try to source things. So you'll see if you need a link um, to something, uh, you'll see it there. Uh, again, as we said last time, we'll post these slides to Slack uh, after the meeting. So uh, the result of having cheaper sequencing is, of course, an explosion of data, and you can see the same 20-year period and then extrapolate it out another five years. Uh, this is from a paper um, that's cited in the book. I've also written about it on my blog as well, um, genomedad.com, uh, about this um, kind of, again, hyper-logarithmic uh, growth. Uh, and you can see the, the number of genomes getting started 20 years ago with the first genome and uh, along the way, a number of different projects that have produced um, ever increasing amounts of uh, genomic uh, base pairs. Um, a lot of the, the axis along the vertical axis along the right is the number of, uh, of base pairs. Uh, along the left is the number of human genomes. And in 2020, the red box that you'll see um, is about where we are today. And I think it's kind of holding true. Um, there's three lines there. The red one is kind of, um, if you extrapolated using historical growth, uh, Illumina's estimate is the one in yellow in the middle, and the bottom one is blue, is blue which is more law, uh, every 18 months. The, I think right now the, the Illumina estimate is still holding fairly true. Um, we're seeing doubling of the number of genome, genomes every year. Uh, the estimates vary, but I'm, I'm hearing somewhere between 1 and 5 million uh, genomes have been sequenced worldwide. Um, would love to get uh, perspectives from other folks in the group if they have better data. Um, but the uh, amazing thing, as you see up here in the uh, in the upper left, 
sorry, uh, upper right, is that in the next five years, you can expect billions and billions of genomes uh, to be available. And that's kind of in this, uh, in this area up in here. So we're, we're in this um, really uh, hyper, as I mentioned, this kind of super logarithmic growth uh, in, in the area of this explosion of, of genomic data. And it, it, it begs the question of, you know, what does that mean? Um, how is it that we take advantage of all this data? And really it's um, from that that we uh, will move to cloud. And, and I'll, I'll get into that, why, why it is that it's kind of the only way you can make sense of, of all this data. So yeah, I'll pause there. If you have any uh, comments, especially on uh, numbers of genome sequenced or uh, experienced there, uh, please feel free to chime in. And I'll, I'll keep uh, getting more data uh, and as we go along. If I find something interesting, I'll, I'll post it on Slack. So it leads us to the question of why cloud and um, the, uh, uh, the, yeah, on the left, you'll see the, the traditional approach, um, how, we've, uh, how we've done this in the past, which was basically you bring the data to the researchers. Um, and so there was a lot of copying of data uh, as each person had uh, his or her own silo of the data. And it made for kind of a, an uncoordinated effort um, to move forward. And as you grow with a number of genomes, uh, this just becomes really challenging to support because the data is going everywhere. And uh, so again, how do we move this to a different model? And really it brings us to the approach on, on the right, which is a cloud centric approach. And as you can see there, it's bringing the researchers to the data. And you know, previously again, um, we, we pushed data out to researchers and now we pull the data researchers in to the data to these centralized cloud models. And it has several advantages. Um, one of course is that we're all working off the same data sets. Uh, as, we, as we'll talk about more when we get into um, uh, the computing chapter, the thing that hasn't kept up with, um, you know, all the explosions is, is the, the communications. Um, you know, if you look at the cost of, of computing, if you look at the cost of storage, uh, the, the thing that hasn't kept pace is, is, for most of us, unless you're like in a national data center, is the cost of communication. And so again, uh, moving data around has become increasingly expensive. And so by centralizing um, data into one place, you actually get around one of the biggest challenges in computing, which is again, um, moving, moving data. Um, other benefits accrue, of course, you, know, you, you share resources so that the, the storage is pooled. Um, overall, there's, you, you can, as you'll see in, in the next slide, uh, it, it opens up new methods and, uh, for computation. Um, so that uh, tools now are easier to move about in this, this cloud ecosystem. Uh, and I won't say this, is, this isn't without challenges as well. Um, by bringing in cloud uh, and, and doing it this way, you have to put in a number of, of security and privacy um, approaches that may have been easier to manage in the traditional approach um, because fewer researchers had access to data um, and these things were, in a sense, easier to manage because you were doing it yourself. Um, now, you, a lot of these uh, data and privacy security issues are moved into the cloud, cloud platform itself. And these are, again, things like, um, uh, you know, encryption, um, data access controls, you know, who's a researcher and who isn't. Uh, there's all kinds of issues that arise in, in the cloud environment. So, again, not to downplay um, challenges that arise by moving to the cloud model. But um, it turns out NIH has been really uh, a, uh, a forerunner of moving uh, research into the cloud over the last 20 years, um, really for the you know, last 10 to 15, mostly through the National Cancer Institute. Uh, as you'll see in the book, they discuss, uh, there's a whole section on federal involvement in cloud computing. And as, as you know, from, from BLAST all the way through visualization, um, NIH has a, a number of uh, just fantastic resources that are free uh, that allow you to, you know, admit, fully leverage um, the cloud environment. So, um, kind of an outpouring of, of this cloud environment is this, this idea of reusability. And, you know, we talked about the shared infrastructure. Um, here's a little bit more about um, how this infrastructure and why it's important. Again, we'll, we'll delve into details 
uh, in another chapter. But in a nutshell, this is what we're looking at is that in the center, you have a place where you centralize uh, the workspace and that's generally again in, in a cloud environment. Um, in our case will be because uh, GATK was developed with uh, the Google plat Cloud Platform, uh, we'll be using that. Um, you'll see data repositories on the left and those things, um, again, generally speaking, get put in, pulled into the cloud environment as well. Um, but the researchers themselves aren't, they're, uh, they're distributed. The, uh, the last bit here on the upper right is, is a doc store, or in this case, uh, Docker being the, the, the method that we'll be using for encapsulating or um, putting a wrapper around software. And this again, is a big development, a major development. This has really occurred practically in the last five years. And as we'll learn, uh, as we go through the book, it, it allows you then to move the software to the data rather again than the data to the software. Uh, this is a, a huge advance in software development. Um, uh, Docker is, is something I've never used, and it's one of the parts that I look forward to um, learning more about as we work through the book. Finally, um, just to wrap up on, on chapter one, uh, they do talk about um, the FAIR principles. And uh, if, uh, again, there's a link there on, on the bottom, if you haven't uh, heard of these, um, the idea is, and you can see it there, making the data findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. Uh, in the last um, uh, slide, we talked about interoperability, uh, but the reusability, not only of data, but of software, is a, a huge driver for um, not only moving to the cloud, but just advancing science in general. And the diagram here is showing um, the process of going through uh, data and making it quote fair and uh, and combining it with other with other data. Uh, this organization go dash fair uh, is not mentioned in the book, but um, it is where uh, the the kind of the outgrowth of the fair principles which were introduced um, a few years ago. Uh, you can visit that site and learn more more about fair and the process to go through. As again, as you work on your research projects to think about uh, how to make this data uh, more accessible to the general community. Uh, finally, um, some additional resources uh, that we didn't talk about last time. The source code for the book is on this GitHub um, uh, link and uh, you'll see a number of materials uh, there, the scripts that are included. Uh, in the book um, code is there, even figures, many of the figures that I'm using um, for this book, or sorry, for this presentation are taken from uh, that GitHub link, which again links into some Google Cloud uh, materials as well. There's a blog where uh, the authors are um, updating with um, the latest information, uh, errata and, and the like. Uh, I wanted to give a shout out to the uh, Global Alliance for Genomics and Health, otherwise known as GA4GH. Um, if you haven't joined, you can certainly join as an individual contributor or if you're part of a large organization. Uh, it's a group that I uh, am part of and, and highly recommend uh, not only to keep up with um, the, the latest developments uh, and, and standards as they're being moved through, but also for their fantastic weekly newsletter. Um, I highly recommend signing up for their newsletter because they uh, distill uh, the latest research in genomics and standards and, and FAIR and those topics and uh, it pops into your email box and I find it one of the most helpful resources. Lastly, um, the, the chapters and, uh, and presenters, um, I'll bring up the spreadsheet in just a second, but um, I did wanna give everybody the chance this week, if you haven't already uh, on Slack, uh, let, the, let the group know if you'd like to pick up uh, one of the 14 or 13 chapters in the book. Um, it, is, uh, it has some responsibility because we need uh, to have some slides and have you present the materials for recording. Um, but uh, it, we would really welcome um, your expertise and assistance to, uh, to make the lifting a little lighter um, as we go through. Um, I don't claim uh, great expertise in genomics uh, and many of you on the call do. And so uh, that's our next chapter. Uh, if that's something that uh, you'd be willing to step up, um, be very welcome to, to have you present for next week. Again, it's hard to present um, material that would normally take uh, you know, a semester in, in college to, to boil that down to a 30 minute presentation. But again, our goal is uh, to really resolve um, the broader issues 
that you may come into um, with um, there were questions that you come into the group with and to use Slack then to expand upon those. As we talked about in the last meeting, uh, there, the channels are grouped by chapter, um, roughly grouped by chapter uh, to give you a sense of um, where to go when you have a question. Okay, um, I'll stop there. Uh, and let me bring up the uh, the spreadsheet real quick here. Um, there it is, and I'll share again. There we go. So this is a, a spreadsheet that's on Google Drive. Uh, the link to the spreadsheet um, is shown on Slack. Uh, for the time being, I've set it so that anyone can edit um, this uh, uh, this spreadsheet. And uh, Adelaide, thank you um, for picking up uh, the Terra chapter. I noticed that that's a, a recent edit. Uh, so thank you for that. Um, I greatly appreciate it. Um, so uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about was schedule. Um, you can see that as we talked about last week, if we do these at a clip of one chapter per week, uh, it takes us roughly uh, 13 weeks. Um, the, uh, 14, really, if you count the intro or the welcome from last uh, last time. I'm, I, I wanted to talk to the group uh, how everybody feels about um, holidays and your availability. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of thinking to keep the momentum that will just keep going. Um, basically, we get through genomics, computing, and cloud through the end of this year. And while I know that not everyone is available, it, what it really sets us up for is um, delving in uh, in a big way just after the beginning of the year. So 2021 kicks off with um, Michal uh, speaking about GATK and really getting into the meat of, uh, of the book. So um, uh, I'll, I'll pause there. Uh, it's, it's time to have kind of an open discussion. That was really all the material that I had for the book, from the book for chapter one. Um, so uh, yeah, let's talk about uh, these dates and uh, any, any any more thoughts about uh, about chapters. And again, thank you to those of, those of you who have uh, volunteered. Hey, this is Adelaide, and I just noticed that that uh, date that the chapter I would talk about lands on President's Day, I believe. So I actually may be off that day, so that may not be a good day for me, but. Um, I could do the other uh, Terra chapter instead, which doesn't conflict with any holidays. Sure, so the, the Terra workspace chapter? Yeah, either one. I used, that was my job at the Broad. I taught people how to use Terra, so. Ah, awesome. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's great. Um, so I'm, I, if you don't mind, I'm just gonna move you down to, to here. Yeah. Oops, well, you're not, you're not GA4, GH, so let's not do that. There we go. Great. Thank you for that. Uh, right. And so, you know, we are on Mondays, which um, do, yeah, we do have some um, conflicts on um, holidays and such. Um, but again, to, to try to get everybody, everybody through this. And, and my thought was, is that the heavy lifting really occurs in this, um, these chapters on GATK. And when we get there, uh, if we find that we need to expand, um, we can certainly move some of these other dates around. Um, but uh, again, just to, to, in the interest of keeping things moving, uh, that was my thought, was um, keeping, keeping us on a, a chapter we clip. Uh, but again, I'm, I'm open to suggestions and, and other thoughts. Richard, did you have something you wanted to say? Uh, yeah, I guess I don't really know what I want to say, but let me just talk and maybe in the course of talking, <laughs> it'll get me. So sure. um, I, uh, I don't know how representative my situation is with other people, but um, it's kind of hard for me to predict somewhere in the, in the future of how, you know, like, the first week of you know February, what, whether I'll have time to do this or not. Um, I'm very interested in attending you know these sessions as much as I can, just to kind of absorb whatever information is out there. So I don't want to come right out and commit to doing something, even though I probably should. Uh, but in terms of what I'd really like to get out of the book or what I'd like to get out of this this group, um, I guess I'm thinking that um, when I look at this book, I feel like I could learn it on my own except that I know that I'll run into situations where something that'll take me five hours to figure out, there'll be somebody on this call who figured it out already and can 
you know, save me five hours or, or four hours and 55 minutes <laughs> because just by explaining something. So my guess is that, um, and I haven't looked real closely at the book yet, but my guess is that those, it's those couple of first chapter, of, like the setup chapters that really kill you. That's usually how it goes is, um, you know, you know, I'll have some problem setting up the account. I'll have some problem. I don't know, maybe, maybe the book, the book, um, or the, the, uh, you know, the, the services that we're using, maybe they've changed slightly since the book was written. And so then, you know, there'll be some little stupid thing that I didn't notice and it'll take me forever and I'll have to Google all over the place to be able to find the answer. So um, I guess what I'm wondering is maybe, again, and without looking super closely at the book, maybe it's useful to have, um, uh, you know, especially some of those chapters be more like a working session where um, we kind of all look over each other's shoulders as we're doing, as we're doing some of the work. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Let's just, I'm just, I'm just rambling here. Um, no, um, I haven't, I don't know if anybody's gone through the work of actually setting up any of these accounts. I haven't yet, uh, but it'd be great if we could either do that together or do that after somebody has already plowed through. <laughs> um, sure. I, I noticed that, for example, like a lot of these things are free services. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that was the intent of the book to make it so you could do all of this stuff, you know, using free services. Um, but I haven't, I haven't logged in. I haven't set up the accounts yet. You know, maybe other people have. And uh, no, it would be I, helpful. I, I, if, haven't um, I haven't either. Yeah. yeah. No, a good so suggestion. Like doing, uh, oh, and, sorry. Please go ahead. Oh, so is it like doing live coding and... Yeah. Well, not necessarily live coding, but, um, or maybe, maybe that's what we, maybe that, maybe, I don't know, maybe that'd be useful is just to have the hour that we devote to this each week, just be, um, you know, sitting down with the chapter, maybe some, maybe if, if one person has already gone through the work of setting things up, uh, the rest of us can get just kind of follow along that week. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't, you know, if you're, if you're doing this either for work or for career, than uh, than I do per week to you know to spend a an afternoon or two you know setting this stuff up stuff stuff up you know at this point I'm mostly just doing this for fun and for hobby so I don't know that I can really devote like an eight hour day or anything to some of this stuff even though I know that that's probably what it takes to be successful but on the other hand if if um, all it takes is one of us to have done that <laughs> and uh, the rest of us can cheat and uh, just copy what the other guy did. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I, you know, for example, I don't know if it's feasible for us to just devote one one of these um, uh, Mondays to just simply all of us setting up accounts or that kind of practical right. stuff. So, or maybe maybe other people would prefer to you know do that offline. I don't know. Again, yeah, I'm just so rambling I, here. Thought, so I don't know. Yeah, my thought was is that we'd use these sessions um, as working sessions. Well, really, Slack is the was was the intent. If you had you know if you ran into difficulties, um, the yeah, maybe that's, chapter on maybe that's better. Yeah. And, and the chapter on cloud is the is the chapter where we would actually make sure that everybody was up to speed on being on the Google Cloud platform by the time we got into GTK, so that um, you still have a you know a week or so or two to get started with that and to play around um, to play around with it. I, to your point, I haven't signed up for GCP. You know the, the beacon every time I log into you know Chrome is is saying sign up for your three hundred dollars or free credit. So it's, it's beckoning, um, but uh, I haven't I haven't done that yet. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but yeah, I, I do like your idea, especially when we get into the heavy lifting um, with uh, best, best practice workflow. I think also when we get into uh, the work the the workflow chapters in Terra, that may be uh, an opportunity to change the format of the club a little bit so that it is kind of more working session, and someone who has gone through it um, could explain what um, he or she has done. The, the first couple of chapters, though, are a lot more kind of pedagogically, you know, kind of normal uh, in the sense that, right, I mean, they, they, they follow background in genomics, background in computing, so that, again, we're all level set by the time we, we get into it. But, yeah, I think your point's well taken, and um, I think there's a lot of work, um, a lot, like I say, a lot of heavy lifting, and that may be a, a chance. So, for the people that are presenting those chapters, I kind of believe it up to them to uh, decide how they present. If it, you know, if, it, if it's easier to present saying, here's how I did the workflow in GATK, rather than going through slides, then I think that, that is a much better use of time. It's very practical. Thoughts there? Uh, I'll just share the share my screen um, uh, on 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 the Slack again. 
Um, the, uh, the, the chapters here we talked about uh, are, are roughly organized uh, in, in groups. The chapters are grouped uh, like, the, like the book is. And Adelaide, thank you for um, your intro. Uh, we'll, we'll give you a chance to say hello in just a sec. Um, very happy that you're here with us. But any, in any event, so uh, also this, uh, this wins and feedback, um, you know, yesterday I was able to connect uh, Slack, Google Drive. Um, if you have something that uh, goes particularly well, um, it's a, a nice place to, sh to share. Uh, feedback also just kind of on how the club is going. Um, you know, I wish that we had blah. Uh, this is a place to, to post that. But in general, if you have questions about, uh, you know, I can't get into the cloud, um, this would be the place to post. It would be on, 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 uh, on the cloud channel. Um, and similarly, you know, I, I can't figure out how to do that silly somatic mutation best practice thing in GATK. Well, this would be the place for that. So. Okay. Are there thoughts on uh, on the organization or or chapters? Uh, again, you don't have to sign up right now, uh, but I would by next week like to kind of have it uh, nailed down so that I know for myself anyway uh, which chapters I'll continue presenting. Um, and again, I, I welcome, especially next week uh, for chapter two, uh, if someone wants to pick that up. And I encourage everyone, of course, to, to move along with, uh, you know, Google Cloud and get that get that going. Okay, um, uh, so Ian and Adelaide uh, are, are new to the group. Um, we'll just spend a couple of minutes. Uh, last time we had uh, kind of a two minute intro for everybody. Uh, so Ian, if you wouldn't mind kicking us off, uh, let, us, let us know a little bit about you and I think you've already posted on the Slack uh, your research. I can't remember, but I think you have. But anyway, uh, welcome to the group and tell us a little about yourself. Uh, thank you, Katie. And thank you for organizing the club. And my name is Ian and I come from the bioinformatics core lab of the Molecular Research, uh, uh, Molecular Medicine Research Center at Chang'e University in Taiwan. And our, our major task was uh, provide bioinformatics service for our uh, university, and we also participate in uh, International Cancer Proteogenomics Consortium uh, called ICPC. Uh, we are uh, working on the oral uh, squamous cell carcinoma, oral cancer. Yeah, and we perform the multiple uh, omics for the OSCC, like the genomics, uh, transcriptomics, proteomics, and phosphoproteomics. And we are trying to integrate everything together and find something useful for OSCC patient in Taiwan. And uh, the, the reason I joined the club is I want to learn about the cloud. I, I use GATK a lot. Yeah, we do, we, we, we do a lot of somatic mutation, uh, but we are not using cloud because our administration, they, uh, not, they are very conserved. Uh, hesitate to using cloud. So we have uh, our uh, high performance computing cl cluster, but we don't have cloud, but that would be the trend for the genomics. So that's why I want to learn in, in this cloud. So that's all about. Yeah, thank you. Great, Ian, thank you. And do I hear a little one? Do I hear a little one in the background? Is that, or is that somebody else? Uh, yeah, my kids won't sleep. <laughs> uh, but my camera cannot cannot work working well. <laughs> yeah, he just stay uh, wait waiting waiting for me. <laughs> but that's fine. Okay, great. But well, a future genomicist or or a computational biologist, I don't know. But but that's that's great. And uh, again, thank you, Ian, for joining. Us. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, uh, and. Uh, uh, Adelaide, just to, before I get to you, um, I just want to also mention, uh, Matthew, I, I see that you've joined us and uh, just to acknowledge that uh, we see you and uh, hello and, and, and welcome. Great. Uh, so Adelaide, um, hi. Uh, thank you for, for yeah, hi. Um, uh, Adelaide, over to you. Thank you for joining us. And uh, I, again, I, I haven't had a chance to read your bio, but if you could just give us a quick little synopsis and uh, let, let us know about you. Um, hi, so, so I watched last week's video and I learned that uh, at least one of the other members used to be a marine biologist. 
and or is a marine biologist still and I actually my background is marine biology uh, believe it or not but I got into big data really quickly because I was dealing with large oceanographic data sets and personally I got very interested in genomics uh, as an a tool to indicate how climate change is affecting our organisms and pollution and so um, I got very involved in trying to find data sets that were helpful for me to like support what I was observing in the field as a biologist. So um, my career has evolved a lot. And I, as I mentioned, I was at the Broad uh, with Geraldine for a while while the Terra platform was being built. So I'm very intimately familiar with her book writing efforts that I know a lot about what's in this book, but I actually haven't read it as much as I want to. You know what I mean? Like, like actually thinking about what's being said because it has a lot to do with, um, you know, there's, a, there's just a lot of complexity built. And that's why I like this book. It's hard to find an actual book that's up to date, that has all the content that you need to get going. Like you could read this book and boom, you could go and do the stuff, but there's still a lot of ins and outs that isn't written down anywhere. I know as a cloud outreach person that like the instruction manuals sometimes aren't moving quickly enough. The documentation isn't there. So the book is a great starting point, but things have changed. I've, you know, I've been on the Terra platform recently and I know that things, you know, are constantly being improved, like the ability to dockerize your workspaces, things like that, mm -hmm. wasn't in the platform when this book was written. And so I want to take this time to get re-familiarized with the platform and understand maybe what's the what's the best practice for a researcher so I can translate that in my current job. My current job, I just got hired as a contractor at NCBI to help researchers use the cloud because they're putting all their resources in the cloud, starting with SRA, right? So mm -hmm. um, this is a big deal uh, because they don't want anyone to get feel left behind. And this issue you brought up about having to download petabytes of data, I, I see people still doing that. And it's a shame right. because there's a better way, but it's hard. You have to start with a whole new, uh, you know, language and, and, and you have to train people at how to think about cloud. And, uh, you know, I'm here. I want to hear how you guys are doing because it's going to help me do my job better. And so I'm really looking forward to hearing your first person experiences and like what, what stands out to you from this book, if I decide to use it as course material or what parts need to be um, more ex you know, ex explained in more detail for people who aren't cloud savvy or genomic savvy. So um, I'm certainly wouldn't say I'm an expert on GATK. Hopefully you can get Geraldine to pop in to talk about best practices, <laughs> but I, I do know about it, um, the, the pipeline, but yeah. So anyway, that's me. And then, you know, I'm on Slack now. So if anyone has any questions or, Steph, I'm happy to, to help um, get people set up. Great, great. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, and, and you bring up an, a number of issues. Uh, like Ian, if you know, this, this move to cloud is, is a big deal for, for most of us, right? And for various reasons, right? For some people, it's, um, I just don't have an organization that's ready to support it yet, right? For other people, it's, I don't have the expertise uh, in my organization to figure out how to make it work. Uh, and for others, it's just kind of an intellectual curiosity that, you know, it, you're following the latest trends and, and want to keep up. Um, I think you also brought up good points about trying to uh, maintain, you know, uh, current knowledge. The field is changing so rapidly. Uh, Richard was kind of hinted at the same thing, which is um, if there are things that are, aren't in the book, um, you know, this is, again, a forum for us to, to move through them quickly and to resolve those issues. So there are many benefits to being in a book club, but I, I think that's probably, in this case, one of the most important is that we can share, um, you know, our, our, our shared suffering and pain will uh, move us all along faster um, as, you know, in this pursuit. So thank you. I also, um, in addition to marine biology, um, there's uh, at least two or three uh, microbiology nuts, um, and I, I use that in a very, uh, in the most warm way possible. Uh, a lot of folks who are interested in, in microbiome. Uh, we have um, folks who are doing work in a lot of work in cancer and, and human genetics, uh, but like you said, in marine biology as well. So it's, it's really great um, to have this uh, diverse set of um, experiences and, and backgrounds to, to, to bring uh, to the table. Everybody has uh, just a wealth. I'm just overwhelmed with, um, as, I go, as I went through some of the, the bios on the uh, intro channel, it, it's just, it's really, really, really a pleasure for me to, 
to work with is a, uh, a fantastic group of people. So uh, I'll pause. Um, any other comments uh, before we uh, wrap it up for, for today? Again, thanks for those intros, Ian and, uh, and Adelaide. Um, Matt, to you, I, I wanted to say, I just want to, you're on mute, but I just want to say hello and make sure that you can hear us okay. Yeah, I can hear you okay. Uh, maybe I can give an introduction because I wasn't in the last session, so. Um... Ah, my bad apologies. Okay, great. Thank <laughs> you. You've been, you've been so active on Slack, but thank you. Appreciate it. Please do. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, so, well, I, I guess I did already, like, cover a lot of things. And uh, apologies if it, if the sound cuts at some point, because uh, Zoom's just informed me for the third time that my connection's unstable. Uh, but I've been able to hear everyone okay. Uh, well, I, I'm particularly interested in the in, in this genomics in the cloud book, because, as I mentioned on the on the Slack channel, like, part of my uh, career history kind of, like, collided with um, the Broad Institute in 2018 back when the Terra platform was still called FireCloud. And so ever mm -hmm. since I've been more or less involved in, in what they've been they've been doing. I've actually um, I've actually tried to uh, popularize uh, Terra in in Chile because I used to live in, in South America in Chile. And uh, I think there, uh, like many places in South America, they, they can really benefit from from cloud computing because like for example my university didn't always have uh, a good cluster uh, system. So, I mean, there's there's a lot of reasons already for in, in the Western world to use um, cloud resources, but I think there's also sometimes inadequate resources uh, in some places, and they could really benefit from using something like uh, like Terra. So, so I've um, so so as I've mentioned, I, I I'm in chapter 14 of the book. My my research was used as the the right. template to present FireCloud slash uh, Terra what that and became Terra. And uh, uh, shamefully, uh, I haven't, uh, I've read chapter 14 many times because I've looked at several drafts, but uh, shamefully, even though I've had the book since I think like April or May, I, I still haven't uh, gone through it. So this, this, uh, this book club is an opportunity uh, to, to finally get, get through it. I need, I need that, that extra motivation. Uh, yeah, uh, apart from that, I, I, I'm, I'm back in the UK now. Uh, I'm working at the Welcome Center for Human Genetics uh, at um, Oxford University. I'm part of the uh, the bioinformatics uh, core there, so helping different teams with their uh, their needs. And I'm actually um, right now working with uh, a, a WIDL pipeline, the WDL pipeline. So maybe I could also um, present those those chapters if if it's okay to present multiple uh, chapters. Obviously, chapter 14 is the obvious one for me to present, but maybe I could uh, I could also uh, cover Whittle. Wow, that would be fantastic. Um, I'm uh, I'm putting you down as we speak. Um, so there's, there's yeah, actually you could two... put me for the two sessions. That, that I think that I'd be okay. I I think I think it's it's far in the future enough that I can't like 100% commit to those dates. But I, I'm guessing yeah. that probably some dates are going to move around anyway. So just just put me down for now, and and close to the time I'll I'll figure out if I can if I can do it. Like in, in mid January, I'll, I'll I'll probably it'll probably be. Great. Yes, yeah, so I, I already have for... my, yeah. Go ahead. You good? Uh, you could put me down for both of them. I think I think that, that would be right, like. Okay, okay. Well, I, you know, in the, the second one is, is a short, uh, the short-er chapter in the book. And um, uh, it, 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 it uh, so you know, they kind of have some. The WDL here anymore. Uh, yes, yeah, indeed. Uh, okay. But the, the, the cha chapter nine um, is, is more of a working session. I guess we could use it as a working session because it has, practical examples um so yeah well i could of, like uh, please yeah I, I could keep it short like i could just do like a short in introduction for that for chapter nine and then and then yeah then it turns into a working session great great uh, much appreciated thank, thank you for that yeah uh that, that's a, a great help ah good no problem and thank you for the introduction yeah and and, and welcome to the group Okay. Thank you. Um, so, yeah. Again, um, feel free, everyone, if, if you'd like to uh, to jump in or, or, or you know send a note on Slack to uh, to let us know. Uh, again, much much appreciated. By the way, your connection is working out really well, Matthew. Uh, sounds great. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear. It. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
So I, I think that'll put, kind of be, a, 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 I'll pause one more time. Uh, other, other comments, questions? Uh, again, we'll, we'll kind of keep things going. I, I really appreciate the involvement on Slack. Uh, as Richard mentioned last time, um, everyone has been really great about, uh, you know, doing the thumbs up or hello and, and keeping uh, everyone engaged so that uh, people know that when they post something that it's actually being listened to. Uh, I appreciate the same. Um, I, I posted uh, a little story in the reproducibility channel uh, over the weekend. It's kind of adjacent, um, but it's not specifically in genomics. But uh, it, it gets to um, some of the benefits that accrue by by producing and doing reproducible research. Um, any other uh, thoughts for the group from the group uh, before we wrap up for today? I have one I have a quick. Oh. Oh, uh, sorry. Okay. Did you want to oh, go? Right. Go ahead. <laughs> no, uh, go ahead, please. I just have one quick question. I posted something in the Slack, but I, I'll repeat it here again. Um, I kind of would like to use a genome that I'm familiar with in order to be able to do this book. And you know, I find it easier to learn stuff if I'm doing it on my own. And um, I haven't done my full genomic sequence yet, uh, even though it's under $1,000. And I'm wondering if other people have. And if so, if you have a specific um, place that you recommend. I know that um, I posted in the Slack that Dante Labs is doing a $149 special, but um, I've heard mixed things about their quality and um, reliability. And, um, and I'm just curious if other people have already sequenced their genome and what you might recommend. Anybody have anything or? I know, KT, you've probably sequenced more genomes than <laughs> all of us put together. I don't know. Well, that, that, that is an area- Did you just of, pay of the $1,000? <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I did. Um, I, actually, the first ones were, were more expensive, um, sadly, because it was, you know, five, six years ago. Um, but uh, the, the, my kids were uh, about a thousand, little over a thousand dollars each. Um, right now, I think uh, the lowest one that I've seen that's, you know, kind of credible is coming out of Nebula Genetics. Um, and this is the, you know, the one of the George Church spinoffs. Um, and I think they're at 299 right now. Um, it has a subscription component to it as well, but it is 30x coverage and uh, provides all the data files that you, you know, that we all love and adore. So uh, you have so access you can to your download everything. Data. You can download yeah, everything. You can download yeah, okay. everything. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's uh, how about the, the rest the of lowest, you? Like, how, how many of you yeah. have sequenced your own genome? And anybody have experience with it? No. No. Okay. Yeah. So I, and, and I, um, no, just genotyping. Uh, I, right. Yeah. And yeah. So the, 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 the 23 me and, and, and ancestry and the like, yeah, that, that's also, but, but again, our kind of our goal here is, is going after full genomes. Um, I, I posted mine uh, publicly. I, I, I mentioned it in, in the last, in the last meeting, but uh, I'm at uh, genome.startcodon.org. And that's actually a, a, if you want to poke around, that's all posted to, uh, Amazon uh, S3, and all the files are there. So uh, again, it's not yours, but um, it's certainly freely available. Uh, and it also goes through, uh, there's a technical report and a clinical report that I posted publicly. So it gives you a sense of um, not only the files that are involved, but the layout and some of the things that pop out of, of, of calling and you know, variant analysis. So it's not a bad, not, not a bad starting place. Um, if the you know, the mysteries of what's a BAM file uh, are, are new to you. Um, well, you know, it's a, a, a reasonable place to start. I'll, I'll post that link in the, uh, in the channel later. So I have a question. Yeah. So I imagine the incentive for learning all this cloud computing for those who didn't have access to HPC is obvious. But then how about if you have already have access to HPC and, um, and there's this cloud computing. So what would be like your main incentive in learning this? Maybe it's kind of like to convince people, well, um, like what's the point of doing this cloud computing? We already have uh, our own HPCs and we don't have to pay extra cost for that. So what is your experience like? What's of course, uh, you already presented all these uh, possible advantages, but in your experience, maybe you have um, uh, shared your workflow with your collaborators. And what is um, like their main impression after um, 
you know, after getting their hands wet with all this cloud computing? Yeah, I, I'm really curious to know. Uh, and I'll open up to up to the, uh, to the group. I, you know, I'm I'm in, I I'm come at this as an individual contributor, and so uh, to me, it was really about for me, it was about cost. Uh, it's one, it's about access to resources that I wouldn't otherwise have. But I'm curious if others on the team have done exactly what you said, which is gone from a, a you know a private cluster environment to a cloud and have made that move. Um, what you've experienced, and I would love to hear if anyone's had that. You know, if if not, then this is the forum where you, you know you you get inculcated with the DNA, right, of, of how to bring your organization into the age of cloud computing. So I'll pause there. I I have a lot of experience with that. The most recent work experience I had, they had moved over to NovaSeq. So maybe your sequencing technology is beginning to produce more and more data and it's not even possible to download it. Uh, like the runs, it would take two days physically to get it across the line onto your local HPC, whereas you could just go ahead and start if you're already in the cloud um, to do the analysis. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's, it's, it's really, we're not gonna have a choice, I think, in the future, just because of the large amounts of data. So it's good to be ready. Uh, you know, that's just my personal opinion. Like, um, why wait until, you know, HPC kind of, and HPC has a role. There's absolutely nothing wrong with having HPC. There were many days where I wished we had one, but we were 100% cloud. So <laughs> I didn't have that option. So. But there, there are advantages to having HPC for running, you know, novel pipelines or things that don't require, you know, you to be on the cloud, um, you know, high throughput screening type of analyses, like the secondary analyses, but primary analyses, you kind of need to go to the cloud these days. That's just my personal opinion and my personal experience, but I'd love to hear what other people have done um, to bridge the gap. And I, my big metaphor, I'm trying to use metaphors <laughs> in my talk now, is remember when we, very few people had these, but everybody had a landline and people wouldn't give up the landline because they were afraid of an emergency, right? That, that the uh, fire department would be able to find them and stuff. But how many of us have landlines anymore? Um, right? Like you, there's just going to be a break point at some point where that HPC is, is not going to be supported by the universities and institutions because there is a cost. The researchers don't see the cost. The universities see the cost. There's going to be a break point in there somewhere where we're going to be forced to cloud, in, in my personal opinion. Yeah, thanks for that. I have another perspective to offer. So I actually uh, got working with uh, the pl Terra platform one because of this um, workshop that I did and many workshops afterwards, but it was also, I had this project that I wanted to work on that was kind of separate from uh, uh, my job at the time. And uh, well, they, I didn't have a red, ready access to a cluster. So that's kind of separate to what you're asking, but I also have the perspective that um, on a platform like Terra, for example, there's a lot of things that you don't need to worry about that you would have to worry about in HPC cluster. So for example, uh, if we're talking about GATK tools, for example, if you're setting it up on your, on your machine, you have to ask yourself, hey, did I set it up correctly? Am I following best practices? Uh, you know, did I forget to, to use a certain tool? Am I using the most updated tool, right? You have all, all these sorts of questions. With a platform like Terra, like built on top of uh, GCP, right? Uh, that, that all that thinking is done for you, and you, you have the sort of close to perfect guarantee that you're using like the most up to date version, uh, that you're following uh, best practices because you're basically just running the script that uh, that the Broad Institute itself gives to you. So, so that's I can only speak for Terra. I've, I haven't tried like Seven Bridges or anything else, but at least like these platforms that sit uh, on top of the cloud, like they do give you the added benefit that like everything is already pretty much uh, set up. And that, that also means that the other advantage is if, if you're interested in reproducibility, you can write in a paper exactly what you did, right? And somebody can try and reproduce that, but they're, because of the, they're, they're using a different machine and, you know, human error, they might end up with something a little bit different. So have they really reproduced? It's, it's, it's debatable. Whereas if you have something in the cluster, then you can just say, okay, I'm done, I've published. Now I could just make it publicly available and you just open up your, your pipeline and, and it's there for everybody to either 
reproduce what you've done with your data if you make that data available or with their own data they can uh, follow exactly the same process and and get some 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 interesting results and not have to worry uh i mean maybe it's because i i uh, have been in bioinformatics for still a, a fairly short time but i get really nervous about those things whether like uh, I've made this, like a, some sort of glaring error somewhere, and that's gonna just invalidate my my study. At least when I'm running something on the cloud, right? I'm I'm it's it's somebody else's implementation of the best practices and stuff. Uh, I still have to put put the bits together, but at least I know that you know the the scripts themselves are are are, are best practices. So that's one less thing to worry about when you're on the cloud. Obviously, there's some steps to get on the cloud, but once you're on the cloud, you have that that comfort of okay. Uh, what I'm running is is the right way of doing it, and other people are going to be able to run it the, the same way. So we're all going to be able to compare more readily our our, uh, our data. So it's different levels. So if you think of like uh, if you copy the scripts that the Broad Institute has on their GTK website, that's closer to reproducibility than if you're trying to implement them yourself. And then if you run them on the cloud where they've already been implemented for you, that's another level of where it's even more reproducible. So that's that's what I would. Uh, at, that's a, a big reason, I think, for for using uh, using the cloud and 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 Terra in particular. Matthew, thank you for that. Uh, anyone else? Yeah, maybe just in, in addition to what Matthew and, and Adelaide said, the, the thing that I'd like to point out is the elasticity. Um, once you're in a position where you have your analysis under control and it's reproducible and and packaged up. And quickly you sort of start thinking like, hey, I'm doing a hundred samples now. I could do a thousand. Mm -hmm. And if you have fixed infrastructure, you quickly end up in a situation where you're like, yeah, well, the physics is the limit. But if you're in the cloud, nothing stops you from paying more money and having a higher throughput right. that way. No, I completely agree. And yes, and I'll, I'll, I'll our... add. Go ahead. Sorry, so I just wanted to add an extra thing to to what uh, George said about about scalability. The advantage as well is that you don't have to worry about the limits of your of the cluster that you're using. So he mentioned that you can go from a hundred to a thousand uh, with well with the Google Cloud. Like you don't have to think, yeah, but can my cluster uh, take that? It's it, yes, it can. Like that's you know, it's uh, like they've built an infrastructure so that it's you know maximally scalable and stuff. And you don't have to worry about, you know, it's not your institute that has to worry about the cost. You also don't have to worry about other using uh, other users, sorry, uh, using up all the, uh, you know, all the memory or or or, or all the the uh, processes or or filling up the disk or or anything like that. You know, um, when you, I, I'm sure anybody who's worked on an HPC has had the experience where you know that somebody's running something on the logging node or or somebody somehow managed to uh, fill the entire uh, drive. I did that once myself, so guilty. Uh, <laughs> you don't have to worry about that with, uh, with, with the cloud. So that's, that's also a, a nice thing. It scales, scales up very nicely. Uh, but, but, nice, I think we'll put a pin in it there. Right? You know, we, it kind of gets to our, 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 our mascot, the pufferfish, which uh, kind of has this idea of expandability and, uh, and, and mimics a lot like uh, bursting in cloud computing. So uh, I, I, I just, I'll, I'll just say in, in closing that, you know, I, on the platform side, uh, I've done a lot of work with DNA Nexus. Uh, and you mentioned seven bridges earlier. There are other platforms that are out there that are built on top of these cloud platforms and they all have their, their advantages um, as well. Uh, this one really kind of gets at doing it. A lot of it's kind of rolling your own. When we talk about um, working directly with the cloud platform, uh, it doesn't have all the niceties um, that some of these other platforms offer. Generally speaking, though, these are, are provided to you at, at, at a lower cost. And for me, um, that's actually why I moved off of DNX, DNA Nexus, uh, in my case, back to uh, Amazon or AWS. Uh, but uh, you know, happy to learn more about uh, Google, Google Cloud, excuse me, as, as part of, of this uh, of this program. So I, I did want to keep us to an hour, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pause there. Um, I'll uh, bring up our, our, our final slide for, for next week. Uh, we'll be meeting again um, next Monday, the 14th of December, cover, covering chapter two on genomics, everything you wanted to know about genomics, but were afraid to ask. I think that might be a, a good subtext for, uh, for our next week's meeting. Um, and thanks for all the participation on, uh, on Slack. Uh, really appreciate everyone being here.
uh, and across the world. I mean, we've got uh, lots of time zones and I really appreciate everyone being here with us today. Looking forward to next week's meeting. Uh, we'll keep it going on Slack and uh, have a great week, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. See you next week. Bye. Okay. Thank Bye -bye. you.